Once upon a time, in the ancient world of mathematics, there existed a vast and uncharted territory known as geometry. Among its many landscapes, the circle stood as one of the most fundamental and fascinating figures. Scholars from different civilizations pondered over its properties, striving to understand its mysteries. In ancient Greece, around the 5th century BCE, the mathematician Hippocrates of Chios began to explore the properties of circles. He discovered that the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of any circle was a constant, which we now know as pi, pi. This discovery laid the groundwork for understanding circles, but the journey was far from over. Centuries later, another great Greek mathematician, Euclid, took the stage. In his monumental work, Elements Euclid defined the circle and described many of its properties. However, the concept of the unit circle, a circle with a radius of one unit, had yet to emerge. The development of trigonometry in the Hellenistic period brought new insights. Hipparchus of Nicaea, known as the father of trigonometry, created the first known trigonometric tables. These tables helped astronomers and mathematicians relate angles to the lengths of chords in a circle. Yet, the specific notion of a unit circle still eluded them. Fast forward to the Islamic Golden Age, where scholars like Al-Khwarizmi and Al-Batani made significant contributions to mathematics and astronomy. They translated and built upon Greek works, including those on trigonometry. Their efforts brought the mathematical community closer to a more refined understanding of circles and angles. It was during the Renaissance, with the revival of classical knowledge and the dawn of new ideas, that the concept of the unit circle truly began to take shape. Mathematicians such as Regiomontanus and Copernicus explored trigonometric functions more deeply, recognizing the importance of standardizing the radius of the circle to one unit for simplicity and consistency. In the 17th century, the unit circle finally solidified its place in mathematics. The French mathematician François Vite and his successors used the unit circle to define trigonometric functions. They understood that by fixing the radius at one unit, the sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle could be directly related to the coordinates of points on the circle. The unit circle became a powerful tool for solving problems in trigonometry, allowing for the visualization of angles and the relationships between different trigonometric functions. It provided a geometric interpretation that was both intuitive and elegant. As the centuries passed, the unit circle found applications in various fields, from physics to engineering, and even in the emerging field of complex numbers. It became a cornerstone of mathematical education, a simple yet profound concept that continues to inspire and enlighten students and scholars alike. And so, the story of the unit circle is a testament to the collaborative and cumulative nature of mathematical discovery. From the ancient Greeks to the Renaissance thinkers, and beyond, the development of the unit circle exemplifies the timeless quest for knowledge and understanding that defines the spirit of mathematics. The story of the unit circle is enriched by contributions from scholars across the world, including significant advancements from India during the classical period. Indian mathematicians and astronomers made remarkable strides in trigonometry, which laid the groundwork for the concept of the unit circle and trigonometric functions. Around the 5th century CE, the renowned Indian mathematician and astronomer Aryabhata made significant contributions to trigonometry. In his seminal work, the Aryabhatiya Aryabhata introduced the sine function, jia, and produced tables of sine values for various angles. His work marked a departure from the Greek approach of using chords, instead focusing on the half chord, which we now call the sine function. Aryabhata's sine table was accurate and provided a foundation for later advancements in trigonometry. Building on Aryabhata's work, another prominent Indian mathematician, Varahamihara, also contributed to the development of trigonometry in the 6th century CE. In his encyclopedic work, the Rihat Samhita Varahamihara provided further trigonometric calculations and applications, demonstrating the practical utility of these concepts in fields like astronomy and astrology. The tradition of mathematical excellence continued with the work of Bhaskara I in the 7th century CE. Bhaskara I provided detailed explanations and improvements on Aryabhata's sign tables, further refining trigonometric calculations. He also introduced the concept of the versine, versin equals one cos, which played a role in the development of trigonometric identities and relationships. One of the most significant contributions came from the 12th century mathematician Bhaskara II, also known as Bhaskaracharya. In his monumental work, the Siddhantashromni Bhaskara II presented comprehensive treatments of trigonometric functions, including sine, cosine, and their inverses. His work on these functions and their relationships can be seen as precursors to the modern understanding of the unit circle and its role in trigonometry. The Indian scholar's method of relating trigonometric functions to the circle influenced the later development of the unit circle concept. By focusing on the half chord, sine, and its properties, 
they provided a framework that made it easier for later mathematicians to visualize and standardize trigonometric functions on a circle with a fixed radius of one unit. In summary, the contributions from Indian mathematicians like Aryabhata, Varahamihara, Bhaskara I, and Bhaskara II played a crucial role in advancing trigonometry. Their work laid the foundational principles that would later integrate into the broader concept of the unit circle, illustrating the interconnected and global nature of mathematical progress. Once upon a time, in the heart of the modern mathematical kingdom, the unit circle stood as a powerful and unifying symbol. Its origins were ancient, rooted in the works of the great scholars of Greece and India, but its influence had grown immensely in the contemporary world. The story of the unit circle in modern times begins with a group of curious students in a bustling classroom. Their teacher, Miss Harper, stood before them with a smile, ready to unveil the secrets of the circle. Today, we'll explore the magic of the unit circle, she announced, her eyes sparkling with excitement. With a wave of her hand, Miss Harper drew a perfect circle on the board, its center at the origin of a coordinate plane, and its radius precisely one unit long. This, she said, is our unit circle. It may seem simple, but it's a gateway to understanding so much of the world around us. She began by explaining how the unit circle helps define trigonometric functions. Imagine an angle theta, measured from the positive x-axis. As we move around the circle, the coordinates of our point are, cos, sin. These are our beloved cosine and sine functions, which help us understand waves, oscillations, and even the rhythms of music. The students were captivated, but Ms. Harper was just getting started. She ventured into the realm of complex numbers, where the unit circle revealed even deeper mysteries. In the complex plane, she said, every point on the unit circle represents a complex number of the form cos plus eisen. This is Euler's formula, and it's the cornerstone of so many mathematical theories. Ms. Harper illustrated how Euler's formula linked trigonometry to the exponential function, showing how it could describe everything from the swinging of a pendulum to the quantum states of particles. The students marveled at how a simple circle could be so profound. Next, she took them on a journey into the world of Fourier transforms. Here she said the unit circle helps us break down complex signals into simple, periodic components. This is the magic behind digital music, image processing, and even the way we compress videos. The students imagined the world of signals and frequencies, understanding that every sound they heard and every image they saw could be analyzed using the unit circle. The circle's power seemed limitless. But Ms. Harper wasn't finished. She revealed how the unit circle played a key role in computer graphics. When we create animations or render 3D objects, we use the unit circle to calculate rotations and transformations. It's what makes our favorite video games and movies come to life. The students envisioned the heroes and worlds of their beloved games, all brought to existence through the mathematical prowess of the unit circle. As the lesson drew to a close, Ms. Harper shared one more secret. In machine learning and data science, she said, the unit circle helps us understand the patterns and relationships in complex data. It's a tool that guides us in making sense of the vast amounts of information in our digital age. The students sat in awe, realizing that the unit circle was not just a geometric shape but a bridge connecting countless domains of knowledge. It was a testament to the unity of mathematics, science, and technology, all woven together by this simple, elegant figure. And so, in the modern world, the unit circle continued to inspire and enlighten, a timeless symbol of the interconnectedness of all things mathematical. Its story, ever evolving, was a reminder of the endless wonders that lay hidden in the world of numbers, waiting to be discovered by curious minds. In the bustling city of Bengaluru, a young mathematician named Ravi sat in his small study, surrounded by stacks of books and papers. Ravi had always been fascinated by the mysteries of mathematics, especially the enigmatic unit circle. One evening, as he poured over his notes, he began to see patterns and structures within the unit circle that hinted at deeper connections, connections that could perhaps link to one of the greatest unsolved problems in mathematics, the Riemann hypothesis. Ravi's journey began with the simple observation that the unit circle was divided into familiar segments. At every 30 degrees, there was a key point on the circle, corresponding to angles like 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and so on. Each of these angles was associated with specific coordinates, representing cosine and sine values. As he plotted these points, he noticed something extraordinary, certain coordinates seemed to align with the distribution of prime numbers in a way that felt more than coincidental. Intrigued, Ravi decided to delve deeper. He started by examining the coordinates of points at 30-degree intervals. To his astonishment, he found that the x-coordinates, cosine values, at these points often had patterns that echoed the primes. It was as if the unit circle was whispering secrets about the primes through these angles. Ravi recalled the basics of the Riemann hypothesis, 
which posits that the non-trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function lie on the critical line in the complex plane, a theory deeply connected to the distribution of prime numbers. Could the unit circle, with its periodic and symmetric properties, somehow reflect this profound hypothesis? Driven by this question, Ravi began mapping angles to the critical line, imagining each 30-degree interval as a step along a journey through the prime numbers. He experimented with various mathematical transformations, translating angles into complex numbers, and overlaying these onto the zeta function's critical line. The patterns that emerged were mesmerizing. It was as if the primes were dancing in harmony with the angles of the unit circle. But Ravi's exploration didn't stop there. He started to see even more intricate structures within the unit circle. He noticed that at every 90-degree interval, there was a natural division into orthogonal components, corresponding to the concepts of odd and even parity. These orthogonal representations seem to mirror the alternation between odd and even numbers, a fundamental characteristic of number theory. The unit circle, Ravi realized, was not just a tool for understanding trigonometric functions but a profound geometric framework that could potentially encode the essence of prime numbers and their distribution. The connection between the orthogonal components at 90 degrees and the parity of numbers was particularly striking. It suggested a deeper symmetry, where the unit circle served as a bridge linking geometry and arithmetic. Ravi spent countless nights exploring these ideas, sketching diagrams, and running calculations. His small study became a hub of mathematical discovery, filled with scribbles that intertwined angles, primes, and orthogonal structures. Each new insight brought him closer to a tantalizing possibility that the unit circle, the seemingly simple geometric object, could provide a new perspective on the Riemann hypothesis. The journey was far from complete, but Ravi felt a profound sense of connection to the long line of mathematicians who had pondered these mysteries before him. He knew that his insights were just the beginning, a spark that might ignite further exploration and collaboration. One evening, as he gazed at the unit circle drawn on his chalkboard, Ravi smiled. He imagined the primes as points of light, each one a step along the infinite path of discovery. The unit circle, in its elegant simplicity, had revealed a glimpse of the deeper order underlying the chaos of numbers. And in that moment, Ravi felt a sense of unity with the mathematical universe, knowing that his journey, like the circle itself, was boundless and eternal. Ravi's journey into the mysteries of the unit circle was far from over. As he sat in his study, listening to the gentle patter of the monsoon rains outside, he couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to uncover. His mind wandered to trigonometric sum to product identities, which he had always found fascinating. Ravi began to contemplate the angles of 30 and 60 degrees, or pi slash 6 and pi slash 3 in radians. These angles were familiar to him, but he sensed there was something deeper to discover. He drew the unit circle and marked these angles, noticing their coordinates and the relationships between them. It struck him how these angles showed a beautiful symmetry when reflected across the unit circle. This symmetry reminded him of the concepts of additive and multiplicative in verses he had studied in algebra. As Ravi pondered this, he realized that the coordinates at these key angles, 30 and 60 degrees, had profound connections to the distribution of prime numbers. The more he explored, the more he saw patterns emerging. It was as if the unit circle was whispering secrets about the primes, revealing a hidden order within its geometric structure. Intrigued, Ravi began to think about how these angles and their symmetries could relate to the Riemann hypothesis, which deals with the distribution of prime numbers. He imagined the unit circle as a bridge, connecting geometry to number theory. The reflections and transformations he observed seemed to echo the complex relationships described by the hypothesis. Ravi's excitement grew as he considered the broader implications of these connections. He saw the unit circle not just as a tool for understanding trigonometric functions, but as a profound framework that encoded the essence of prime numbers and their distribution. The orthogonal components at 90-degree intervals mirrored the alternation between odd and even numbers, suggesting a deeper symmetry within the circle. One night, as Ravi gazed at his chalkboard covered in diagrams and notes, he saw a beautiful harmony in the unit circle's structure. He realized that the circle's elegant geometry could transform sums into products, and these transformations were linked to the angle's symmetrical properties. This symmetry reminded him of how additive inverses cancel to zero and multiplicative inverses simplify to one, creating a balance within the unit circle. Ravi felt a profound sense of connection to the long line of mathematicians who had pondered these mysteries before him. He knew that his insights were just the beginning, a spark that might ignite further exploration and collaboration. The unit circle, with its endless symmetries and connections, had shown him a glimpse of the deeper order that lay beneath the surface of mathematical reality. As he stood by his window, watching the city lights twinkle in the rain, Ravi felt a profound sense of awe. The unit circle had revealed a hidden melody within a grand symphony, where every note and chord played a part in a greater whole. 
He knew his journey was boundless and eternal, fueled by his passion for uncovering the hidden connections that wove together the fabric of mathematics. And so, Robbie's exploration continued, with each new insight bringing him closer to unraveling the mysteries of the unit circle and its profound connection to the primes, the Riemann hypothesis, and beyond. The journey was far from over, but Robbie felt confident that he was on the right path, guided by the elegant symmetries of the unit circle. Robbie's journey into the depths of the unit circle and its hidden connections to the distribution of prime numbers took an intriguing turn when he began to contemplate Euler's sum to product formula for the zeta function. He knew that Euler's identity, which expressed the sum of all natural numbers as a product of prime numbers, held deep significance in number theory. Could the unit circle, with its elegant symmetries, provide a new perspective on this profound relationship? One evening, Robbie sat at his desk, surrounded by his notes and diagrams. The gentle rhythm of the monsoon rains outside provided a soothing backdrop as he delved into his thoughts. He considered the way Euler's sum to product formula connected the sum of natural numbers to the product of primes. This relationship was a cornerstone of the Riemann hypothesis, hinting at a hidden order within the chaotic world of numbers. Robbie began by reflecting on the angles and their symmetries within the unit circle. He recalled how every 30 and 60 degree interval revealed a balance between coordinates, reflecting the deep connection between additive and multiplicative properties. This symmetry resonated with Euler's insight that the sum of all natural numbers could be represented as a product involving primes. As he pondered this, Robbie visualized the unit circle as a stage where these transformations played out. The sum of numbers, represented by the continuous path around the circle, and the product of primes, reflected in the discrete, symmetrical points along the way, seemed to dance in harmony. The unit circle, with its intrinsic geometric beauty, offered a natural framework to understand this duality. Ravi then thought about Euler's product formula for the zeta function, which states that the sum of the reciprocals of the natural numbers raised to a power equals a product over the primes. This formula, when evaluated at specific points, revealed a deep connection between the additive structure of the integers and the multiplicative structure of the primes. Ravi imagined how this relationship might manifest within the unit circle's elegant confines. He saw the unit circle as a bridge, linking the continuous nature of the sum to the discrete structure of the product. The angles and their trigonometric functions provided a way to navigate between these two realms. The sum of the series, like a smooth curve tracing the circle, and the product of primes, like the precise, symmetric points along the circumference, both found a home within this geometric framework. Robbie's excitement grew as he realized that the unit circle's symmetries could offer a new lens through which to view Euler's insights. The orthogonal components at 90-degree intervals, which mirrored the alternation between odd and even numbers, hinted at a deeper connection. These symmetries, when extended to the broader context of the zeta function, suggested a harmonious interplay between addition and multiplication. As he continued to explore these ideas, Robbie felt a profound sense of connection to the long tradition of mathematicians who had grappled with these mysteries. He knew that his insights were just the beginning, a spark that might ignite further exploration and collaboration. The unit circle, with its endless symmetries and connections, had shown him a glimpse of the deeper order that lay beneath the surface of mathematical reality. One night, as Robbie gazed at his chalkboard covered in diagrams and notes, he saw a beautiful harmony in the unit circle's structure. The sum of all numbers and the product of primes, seemingly disparate concepts, found a natural unity within the circle's elegant geometry. The unit circle had revealed a hidden melody within a grand symphony, where every note and chord played a part in a greater whole. As he stood by his window, watching the city lights twinkle in the rain, Robbie felt a profound sense of awe. The journey was far from over, but he felt confident that he was on the right path, guided by the elegant symmetries of the unit circle. With each new insight, Robbie knew he was drawing closer to unraveling the mysteries of the zeta function, the Riemann hypothesis, and the profound connection between the sum of all numbers and the product of primes. Robbie's exploration of the unit circle and its profound connections to number theory had brought him to a point where he was ready to explore the birth of new numbers. He realized that the duality he had been investigating, the interplay between sums and products, between additive and multiplicative properties, could give rise to a new numerical system. This system would embody the elegance and harmony he had discovered within the unit circle. Sitting in his study, Robbie began to sketch his thoughts. He envisioned two types of progressions, one following a simple n plus 1 pattern, representing the natural progression of whole numbers, and the other taking leaps of 1 slash n, embodying a multiplicative approach. These two sequences, he believed, could be intertwined to create a new set of numbers that would capture the dual nature he had been exploring. The n plus 1 progression was straightforward. It was the familiar sequence of natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Each number was simply the previous number plus 1. 
This sequence represented a linear, additive growth, echoing the smooth path around the unit circle. The 1 slash n leaps, however, offered a different perspective. Starting with 1, the next number would be 1 half, then 1 third, 1 fourth, and so on. This sequence captured a multiplicative journey, where each number was a fraction of the whole. These leaps mirrored the discrete, symmetrical points on the unit circle, each one a fraction of the circle's circumference. Ravi began to combine these sequences, imagining a new set of numbers that incorporated both progressions. He called this new set dual aspect numbers. The dual aspect numbers alternated between the n plus 1 progression and the 1 slash n leaps, creating a harmonious blend of additive and multiplicative properties. The first few dual aspect numbers looked like this. 1, 2, 1 half, 3, 1 third, 4, 1 fourth, 5, 1 fifth. As he wrote out the sequence, Ravi marveled at its beauty. Each number in the sequence reflected the duality he had discovered within the unit circle. The whole numbers represented a continuous, additive path, while the fractions represented discrete, multiplicative steps. But Ravi didn't stop there. He began to explore the mathematical properties of these dual aspect numbers. He found that the sequence exhibited fascinating symmetries and patterns. For instance, when he plotted the dual aspect numbers on the unit circle, he noticed that the whole numbers form a smooth, continuous curve, while the fractional leaps created a series of precise, symmetrical points along the circle's circumference. This duality resonated deeply with the sum-to-product relationships he had studied. The additive sequence of whole numbers mirrored the smooth, continuous path of a sum, while the multiplicative leaps reflected the precise, discrete nature of a product. Together, they formed a unified whole, capturing the essence of both arithmetic operations. Ravi's excitement grew as he realized that these dual aspect numbers could offer new insights into the distribution of primes and the Riemann hypothesis. The alternating pattern of addition and multiplication echoed the interplay between the continuous and discrete elements in these deep mathematical problems. One evening, as Ravi sat by his window, watching the city lights twinkle in the rain, he felt a profound sense of accomplishment. He had taken the elegant symmetries of the unit circle and used them to create something entirely new. The dual aspect numbers, with their blend of n plus 1 progression and 1 slash n leaps, represented a fresh perspective on the harmony of mathematics. Ravi knew that his journey was far from over. He envisioned a future where these dual aspect numbers would be explored by mathematicians around the world, offering new insights and sparking further discoveries. The unit circle had once again revealed its hidden depths, guiding him towards a deeper understanding of the interconnectedness of all things mathematical. As he gazed out into the night, Ravi felt a profound sense of connection to the mathematical universe. He knew that his insights were just the beginning, a spark that would ignite further exploration and collaboration. The journey of discovery was endless, and he was ready to embrace it, guided by the elegant symmetries of the unit circle and the new world of dual aspect numbers he had unveiled. Ravi's exploration of the dual aspect numbers and their connection to the unit circle led him to a new and exciting direction. As he delved deeper into the geometric properties he had uncovered, he began to envision an even grander structure, concentric dual unit circles in two dimensions and dual unit spheres in three dimensions. One evening, as the rain drummed softly against his window, Ravi sketched out his ideas. He imagined transforming the unit circle into a series of concentric circles, each representing a different layer of the geometric symphony he had been exploring. These concentric dual unit circles would capture the harmony between additive and multiplicative aspects, with each circle reflecting a different progression of numbers. In his two-dimensional vision, Ravi saw these concentric circles as embodying different layers of mathematical relationships. The innermost circle represented the most basic, fundamental interactions, while the outer circles expanded to include more complex relationships. Each layer added depth to the understanding of the unit circle, creating a rich tapestry of interconnected geometries. Ravi's imagination didn't stop at two dimensions. He extended his vision into three-dimensional space, envisioning a dual unit sphere. This sphere was a more complex and intriguing structure, akin to our own globe. He divided it into hemispheres, the northern hemisphere, the southern hemisphere, and the equatorial region. In this three-dimensional representation, Ravi saw the equator of the sphere as a boundary that divided the northern and southern hemispheres. The northern hemisphere represented regions where additive properties and progressions were most prominent, while the southern hemisphere reflected the multiplicative aspects. The equator, a continuous line of symmetry, captured the transition between these two regions. Ravi found inspiration in comparing this structure to our own globe. Just as the Arctic Ocean is a vast expanse of water surrounded by lands in the northern hemisphere, and Antarctica is a landmass surrounded by ocean in the southern hemisphere, the dual unit sphere also represented a profound duality. The Arctic Ocean, with its open waters, symbolized the pi-slash-three arcs or disks, 
representing the smooth, continuous aspects of the unit circle. In contrast, Antarctica, with its surrounding waters, represented the pi slash six arcs or surfaces, embodying discrete, multiplicative properties. As Ravi contemplated this imagery, he drew parallels between the unit sphere's regions and the mathematical structures he had been exploring. The Arctic Ocean's vastness mirrored the continuity and smoothness of additive progressions, while Antarctica's landmass surrounded by water reflected the discrete, structured leaps of the 1 slash n sequences. This analogy brought a new level of understanding to his geometric models. He meticulously plotted these concentric circles and dual spheres in his diagrams. Each layer and hemisphere was carefully labeled, with arcs and surfaces illustrating the pi slash 3 and pi slash 6 divisions. The visual representation helped him grasp the relationships between the different layers and how they interrelated within the broader mathematical framework. Ravi was excited by the potential of these new structures. He saw the concentric dual unit circles and the dual unit sphere as powerful tools for visualizing and understanding complex mathematical relationships. The harmony between additive and multiplicative aspects, captured in these geometric models, offered new insights into number theory and the distribution of primes. One clear night, as Ravi looked out over the city, he felt a profound sense of accomplishment. His journey from the unit circle to the concentric dual unit circles and the dual unit sphere had opened up new avenues of exploration. The geometric beauty he had uncovered provided a fresh perspective on mathematical harmony, offering a deeper understanding of the intricate connections between different aspects of mathematics. Ravi knew that his work was far from finished. He envisioned a future where mathematicians would explore these new geometric structures, using them to uncover even deeper insights into the mysteries of numbers and their distribution. The concentric dual unit circles and the dual unit sphere had revealed a new dimension of mathematical beauty, and Ravi was eager to continue his journey, guided by the elegant symmetries of these extraordinary shapes. As Ravi's exploration into concentric dual unit circles and the dual unit sphere deepened, he found himself drawn to an even more profound question, the origin and concept of zero. The concept of zero, so fundamental to mathematics, intrigued him, especially in the context of his newly developed geometric models. He wondered if the idea of zero could be better understood through the interplay between these structures and the concept of a theoretical center. One serene evening, while contemplating the view from his window, Ravi pondered how anyone standing on the surface of the earth could perceive themselves as being at the center. The vastness of the earth's surface created a sense of centrality, yet he knew that the true center, the core of the planet, lay deep beneath. This analogy made Ravi think about the mathematical core, a theoretical center of mass that might represent the essence of zero in a similar way. Driven by this thought, Ravi began his quest to understand zero by exploring the field of real numbers. He sought to find the best candidate for this theoretical singularity, the mathematical point where everything converged to define zero. To do this, he examined the properties of real numbers, focusing on how zero functioned within this system and how it related to other mathematical constructs. Ravi started with the basics of real numbers. He understood zero as the point of equilibrium, where positive and negative values cancel each other out. In the real number system, zero was the origin, a neutral point that separated positive and negative values. This foundational role intrigued him, but he felt there was more to discover. As Ravi delved deeper, he explored the concept of zero from various perspectives. He looked at its role in arithmetic operations, algebra, and calculus. He noted that zero was not just a number but a concept that underpinned many mathematical principles. For instance, in calculus, zero was crucial in defining limits and derivatives. In algebra, it was the solution to many equations, representing the point where functions intersected the x-axis. But Ravi wanted to understand zero not just as a functional element but as a theoretical entity, a core or singularity from which all real numbers emanated. He considered the notion of zero in different mathematical contexts. For example, in complex numbers, zero served as the center of the complex plane, analogous to the center of the Earth in his analogy. In higher dimensions, zero was the origin of coordinate systems, the point where all axes intersected. One day, while exploring the geometric implications of zero, Ravi had a breakthrough. He realized that zero could be seen as a central node in a network of mathematical relationships. Just as the center of the Earth was not just a point but a crucial part of the planet's structure, zero was a fundamental point of reference in the real number system, influencing everything around it. Ravi began to visualize zero within his concentric dual unit circles and dual unit sphere. He saw zero as the central point from which all layers and hemispheres radiated. In his geometric models, zero was not merely a number but the essence of balance and symmetry. It was the point of origin from which all other numbers and structures could be understood. He also explored how zero related to his dual aspect numbers. 
He saw that in these sequences, zero represented the equilibrium between additive and multiplicative progressions. It was the point where both sequences met, embodying the harmony he had discovered in his models. With this deeper understanding, Ravi felt a profound sense of clarity. He had uncovered a new perspective on zero, viewing it not just as a mathematical construct but as a central, unifying principle. Zero was the core theoretical singularity that tied together his explorations into concentric circles, spheres, and numbers. As he looked out at the city lights shimmering in the night, Ravi felt a deep sense of satisfaction. His quest to understand zero had revealed new insights into the nature of mathematics and its relationship to geometric and numerical structures. The concept of zero, with its central role and profound implications, had become a guiding star in his mathematical journey. Ravi knew that this was just the beginning of his exploration. The theoretical center of zero opened up new avenues of research and understanding. He envisioned a future where these insights would contribute to a richer comprehension of mathematics, inspiring others to delve into the fundamental nature of numbers and their underlying principles. With renewed determination, Ravi continued his journey, guided by the elegant symmetries of his models and the central, unifying concept of zero. The path ahead was full of potential, and he was eager to explore the endless possibilities that lay beyond the horizon of his current understanding. As Ravi continued his exploration into the world of mathematics, he made an intriguing discovery while experimenting with his calculator. He found that the expression involving 1 over e plus the natural logarithm of the natural logarithm of 2 was approximately zero. This result fascinated him, as it seemed to reveal a delicate balance between different mathematical constants. Curious about this finding, Ravi delved deeper into the roles of these constants. He saw that this result suggested a hidden symmetry and a potential connection to something more fundamental in mathematics. It was clear that the logarithms and the constant E were interacting in a way that hinted at a deeper underlying relationship. In the course of his investigation, Ravi started to draw connections between this result and the concept of the imaginary unit, often represented by the symbol I. The imaginary unit is central in complex numbers, where it represents a fundamental rotation and the concept of a sign flip. Ravi wondered if the natural logarithm of 2 might play a similar role in his mathematical models, symbolizing a kind of rotation or transformation. He began incorporating this idea into his geometric models of concentric circles and spheres. Ravi proposed that ln, 2, could act like an imaginary number, offering a new perspective on rotational symmetry and transformations. In his models, he saw that ln, 2, could modify the dimensions of the geometric shapes, adding a new layer of complexity and depth. This new perspective led Ravi to reflect on how transformations and symmetries in mathematics reveal deeper truths about numbers. The numerical result he had found, with its balance between exponential and logarithmic functions, suggested a profound connection between these mathematical elements and the nature of imaginary numbers. Ravi felt a deep sense of wonder as he realized that ln, too, might represent a new kind of imaginary number, bridging the gap between real and complex mathematical worlds. This insight allowed him to see his models in a new light revealing hidden patterns and connections that span different areas of study. As he looked out over the cityscape at night, Ravi felt a profound connection to the mathematical universe. His journey had taken him from exploring geometric symmetries to discovering new roles for fundamental constants. The discovery of how ln, too, could be interpreted as a form of imaginary number opened up new avenues of research and understanding. Ravi knew that this was just the beginning. The insights he had gained promised to inspire further exploration and contribute to a richer understanding of mathematics. With renewed excitement, he continued his quest, eager to uncover even more about the nature of numbers and their profound relationships. As Ravi continued his exploration into the dual unit circle and its mathematical implications, he realized that a crucial element was still missing, a comprehensive series representation. He understood that such a series could provide deeper insights into the transformations and symmetries he was studying, especially in relation to his candidate for an imaginary number, ln, 2. Reflecting on his knowledge of calculus, Ravi considered how series expansions, like those derived from Taylor series, could illustrate important mathematical concepts. He remembered how the Taylor series for a function like log of 1 minus x, where x is a small value, captured the essence of changes and sign flips in functions. This expansion was fundamental for understanding the behavior of functions near specific points, giving a glimpse into their underlying structure. Inspired by this idea, Ravi sought a more complex series that could offer a fuller representation of the transformations he was exploring. During his research, he came across the ETA function, also known as the alternating zeta function. This function provided a series representation that seemed to align perfectly with the kind of mathematical behavior he was interested in. The ETA function features an alternating series, 
where terms alternate in sign. This was particularly intriguing to Ravi because it mirrored the sign flips and rotational symmetries he had been observing in his geometric models. The alternating nature of the series seemed to capture the essence of the transformations and symmetries he was investigating. Ravi incorporated the ETA function into his models, using its series expansion to explore further the properties of his concentric circles and dual unit spheres. He found that this alternating series added new layers of complexity and insight to his work. It provided a more nuanced view of the mathematical relationships he was studying and reinforced the role of LN, too, in capturing rotational symmetry and sign changes. With this new perspective, Ravi felt more confident in his exploration. The ETA function series representation offered a comprehensive view of the mathematical phenomena he was studying, and it helped him see how his geometric models and numerical findings fit together more coherently. The connection between the ETA function and his models confirmed the importance of LN, too, and provided a deeper understanding of the transformations he had been investigating. As Ravi looked out over the city at night, he felt a deep sense of satisfaction. His journey had taken him from exploring basic geometric concepts to understanding sophisticated series representations. The ETA function had provided the missing piece he needed, completing his framework and enriching his understanding of the mathematical universe. Excited about the possibilities ahead, Ravi continued his quest with renewed enthusiasm. The insights he had gained from the ETA function and its series representation opened new avenues for research and discovery. With a clearer vision of the connections between numbers, transformations, and symmetries, Ravi embraced the endless potential for exploration that lay before him. With his understanding of geometric transformations and series expansions deepening, Ravi turned his focus to the Riemann hypothesis, a mathematical challenge that had eluded proof for over 165 years. He had already developed some elementary proofs, but now he was ready to dive into more rigorous approaches. He was determined not to be constrained by conventional methods, which had repeatedly failed to resolve this elusive problem. Ravi knew that the conventional approaches to the Riemann hypothesis had not yielded a definitive proof despite the best efforts of many mathematicians. This realization fueled his desire to break away from traditional thinking and explore new avenues. He was guided by the insights he had gained from his exploration of the dual unit circle, the ETA function, and other mathematical structures. As he delved into the problem, Ravi began to consider the connection between the gamma function and the Riemann zeta function. He recalled that the Riemann zeta function is closely related to the gamma function through Riemann's functional equation. This equation describes how the zeta function behaves under transformations, linking it to the gamma function's properties. Ravi's insight was that the poles of the gamma function played a crucial role in determining the poles of the zeta function. He realized that understanding the gamma function's poles could provide key insights into the behavior of the zeta function and its connection to the Riemann hypothesis. The gamma function's poles were known to affect the zeta function's poles, as described by the functional equation. With this new perspective, Ravi began to investigate the gamma function's poles and their impact on the zeta function. He explored how these poles influenced the zeta function's behavior and examined how this interaction could be leveraged to address the Riemann hypothesis. He was particularly interested in how the gamma function's properties could help clarify the distribution of the non-trivial zeros of the zeta function, which was central to proving the hypothesis. Ravi realized that the key to resolving the Riemann hypothesis might lie in a more nuanced understanding of these interactions. He was determined to go beyond conventional methods and explore innovative approaches that could reveal new insights. He knew that addressing this problem required not just mathematical rigor but also creativity and a willingness to challenge established paradigms. As Ravi continued his work, he felt a growing sense of excitement. The connection between the gamma function and the zeta function offered a promising direction for his research. By focusing on these fundamental relationships, he hoped to uncover new insights that could lead to a proof of the Riemann hypothesis. His exploration of unconventional methods and his deep understanding of mathematical structures gave him confidence. Ravi was ready to take bold leaps in his approach, guided by the insights he had gained and the innovative perspectives he had developed. He knew that the path ahead was challenging, but he was driven by a passion for discovery and a commitment to advancing mathematical knowledge. With each step, Ravi moved closer to unraveling the mysteries of the Riemann hypothesis. The interplay between the gamma function and the zeta function became a focal point of his research, and he was determined to explore every possibility. As he pressed forward, Ravi embraced the challenge with enthusiasm, eager to contribute to one of mathematics' most profound and enduring questions. As Ravi progressed in his research, he faced a crucial challenge, addressing the removable singularities of the gamma function to better understand its relationship with the Riemann zeta function. To resolve this, Ravi decided to shift the argument of the gamma function from x-1 to x-2. 
This shift was designed to simplify the analysis and remove the problematic singularity at zero. The gamma function, which is related to factorials, has poles at non-positive integers, complicating its use in proofs and analyses. Specifically, the singularity at zero was particularly troublesome. By shifting the function's argument, Ravi aimed to smooth out this issue and make the function more manageable. When Ravi applied this shift, he noticed that it allowed the gamma function to avoid the singularity at zero. The new function, with the argument adjusted, continued to follow the same recurrence relation, meaning that the fundamental properties of the gamma function remained intact. This adjustment effectively removed the removable singularity, providing a clearer view of how the gamma function behaved near zero. This breakthrough had significant implications for Ravi's work. By handling the gamma function's singularity in this way, he could better understand its interaction with the zeta function. The gamma function's poles directly impact the zeta function, so clarifying these interactions was essential for his pursuit of a rigorous proof of the Riemann hypothesis. With the singularity problem addressed, Ravi was able to refine his approach and gain deeper insights into the zeta function's properties. This improvement in his analysis reinforced his belief in the validity of his unconventional methods and brought him closer to solving the Riemann hypothesis. Ravi felt a renewed sense of confidence and motivation. The successful handling of the singularity was a significant step forward, and he was excited about the progress he had made. He continued his exploration with enthusiasm, driven by the innovative techniques he had developed and the new insights they provided. Each discovery brought him closer to making a meaningful contribution to one of mathematics' most challenging problems. As Ravi pressed forward in his research, he made a crucial breakthrough by re-evaluating the integral limits of the gamma and delta functions. Traditionally, these functions were analyzed with limits from zero to infinity, but Ravi explored changing these limits to range from negative infinity to zero. This shift was permissible within the realm of complex analysis and offered a new perspective on the behavior of these functions. By modifying the integral limits, Ravi observed that the gamma and delta functions displayed new properties that were not apparent under the conventional limits. This change allowed him to explore the harmonic properties and periodic behaviors of these functions in greater depth. Ravi was particularly intrigued by how these new integral limits related to harmonic functions and their conjugates. Ravi saw this development as an extension of the harmonic conjugate theorem, which traditionally dealt with harmonic functions and their conjugates. He proposed naming these new inverse functions as harmonic conjugates of the original gamma and delta functions, recognizing their role in the harmonic structure of his analysis. However, Ravi was acutely aware of the potential criticism that could arise from this approach. Critics might argue that he had not isolated the harmonic behavior emerging from the reflection periodicity of the gamma function or the rotational harmony city alone. Ravi knew that presenting these concepts without a rigorous justification could lead to skepticism from the mathematical community. To address these concerns and play it safe, Ravi decided to use subscripts to denote the periodicity of the gamma and delta functions in his work. By labeling these functions with a subscript p to signify their periodic nature, he aimed to clearly distinguish them from the original functions and highlight their specific properties related to periodicity and harmonic behavior. This approach allowed Ravi to present his findings with greater precision and clarity. By clearly marking the periodic aspects of the functions, he hoped to mitigate potential criticisms and demonstrate the rigor of his analysis. The subscripting method provided a way to articulate the new insights while maintaining the integrity of his mathematical framework. With these adjustments, Ravi continued to refine his research and build upon his breakthrough. The new understanding of the gamma and delta functions, combined with the innovative use of harmonic conjugates and periodicity, offered a promising direction for addressing the Riemann hypothesis. Ravi remained focused and determined, confident in the validity of his methods and eager to advance his work further. As he looked ahead, Ravi was excited about the possibilities that his new approach opened up. The integration of complex analysis and harmonic functions into his research represented a significant step forward, and he was motivated to explore the full potential of these discoveries. With each new development, Ravi moved closer to uncovering a rigorous proof of the Riemann hypothesis and making a meaningful contribution to the field of mathematics. With his new insights into the gamma and delta functions, Ravi turned his attention to the zeta function, a crucial piece in the puzzle of his approach to proving the Riemann hypothesis. He had already explored the unification possibilities of the zeta function through his dual unit circle model, which provided a solid foundation for his analysis. Now, Ravi faced a significant challenge, addressing the issue raised by Nicole Orsma regarding the divergence of the zeta function at s equals 1. Orsma's logic had long held that the zeta function diverged at s equals 1, a critical point that posed a problem for any comprehensive theory. Ravi needed to counter this divergence to draw a unifying functional equation that would integrate Euler's original zeta function, 
the Riemann zeta function, and his own continuum harmonic zeta function. To tackle this challenge, Ravi employed the delta function and residue analysis, tools he had found invaluable in his previous work. The delta function allowed him to manage singularities and address issues related to divergence, while residue analysis provided a way to understand the behavior of functions around their poles. This combination proved to be a powerful method for tackling the divergence problem. Ravi also leveraged various complex analysis theorems, including the maximum modulus theorem, the minimum modulus theorem, the mean value theorem, and Liouville's theorem. These theorems supported his approach by providing additional layers of validation and rigor to his analysis. They helped him establish that his methods for addressing divergence and unifying the zeta functions were consistent with established mathematical principles. Through meticulous work, Ravi was able to draw an alternate functional equation that unified Euler's zeta function, the Riemann zeta function, and his continuum harmonic zeta function. His approach resolved the divergence issue by incorporating insights from residue analysis and delta functions, effectively addressing the concerns raised by Orsma's logic. The success of this approach marked a significant milestone in Ravi's research. It demonstrated that his innovative methods were not only feasible but also aligned with fundamental complex analysis principles. The unification of these different zeta functions provided a more comprehensive framework for understanding their relationships and behavior. Ravi's breakthrough was met with enthusiasm and validation from the mathematical community. His ability to address divergence, integrate various functions, and support his approach with complex analysis theorems showcased the depth and rigor of his work. The unified functional equation he developed offered a new perspective on the zeta functions and contributed to the ongoing quest to solve the Riemann hypothesis. As Ravi continued his research, he felt a renewed sense of accomplishment and motivation. The successful integration of Euler's zeta function, the Riemann zeta function, and his harmonic zeta function represented a major advancement in his approach. With this foundation in place, Ravi was poised to explore further and refine his proof, bringing him closer to unraveling one of mathematics' most profound mysteries.